All right. Hello, everybody. We are starting things off a little bit calmer, a little bit chiller today because we're not doing a typical episode. We're going to be doing a guided meditation together. So wherever you are, uh, just get as comfy as you can. You know, if you're cold, bundle up. If you're, you know, walking around doing something, maybe you can take a minute and sit or lie down, whatever it is. Maybe you're drifting off to sleep. Just give yourself a chance to get a little cozy. You know, it's, it's getting colder, at least in this hemisphere. And, uh, it's good to be warm and bundled and supported and all that fun stuff. So do what you need to do to just make yourself a little bit more relaxed. And, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna do some stuff together. Hopefully you can spend a few minutes with me just being good to ourselves. Um, this year has been hard for everyone. It seems like there's something going on in the universe, something in the water. I don't know, maybe Mercury is in a permanent retrograde or something like that. I don't know. But right now, especially here at the end of this year, at the end of this decade, um, everybody's having a hard time. And if not an explicitly hard time, at least it's just been a lot. There's a lot going on, a lot of opportunities for growth that aren't always pleasant. Sometimes that growth is painful. Sometimes it's up and down. Sometimes it's just a lot. And uh, I think all of us are there right now. I could see it in everybody's face, everybody I talk to. And so we need to take this opportunity to be good to ourselves, myself included. So, you know, it's at the end of the year. I want to help you gear up for the new year, for this new decade. And it's hard to do so when there's just so much baggage left from the last one. So this guided meditation is primarily going to be about letting go. But first, we need to get through the holidays. So I want to give you some advice about getting through this holiday season. And uh, then we'll get into the more formal meditation part. But right now, let's take a few deep breaths together. How we're going to do this is we're going to breathe in together. We're just going to hold it for a few seconds. And then we're going to exhale just holding it for three nice seconds. How about that? So first breathe in, hold it and exhale. Good. Let's hold it a little bit longer this time in, hold it, exhale. One more time. Again, holding it a little bit longer. In. And let it out. Great. I've been experimenting lately with taking progressively longer deep breaths. So, um, you know, breathing in, holding it, exhaling, and making those periods longer and longer. And sometimes doing a little bit of a triangle going up and then coming back down. And that's been working really well for me, but whatever works well for you is great. And I appreciate you taking those few deep breaths with me. Sometimes when you're trying to connect with somebody, be that through a conversation, through therapy, through a massage, anything like that, simply just taking a breath together is a great way to get onto the same page. And I think you and I just got on the same page a little bit. So thanks for that. As we move forward, you can breathe however you'd like. If you want to breathe more deeply, um, just sort of at rest, then that's cool. If you want to let your breath do its own thing, that's cool too. And um, I'll let you know when I want you to breathe differently. The breaths, though, that we just took, these deep breaths, these are important, you know, deep diaphragm breaths. If you take a deep breath, I want you to really fill, you know, from the bottom up. You don't want to take these little shallow breaths at the top of your chest big, full belly diaphragm breaths. And these are helping you. These help you to engage your relaxation response, the part of your nervous system that takes over and helps you to rest, helps you, that helps you rejuvenate, helps you come down from stress and the things that you need to do to adapt to the world. We don't want that. We want to be good to ourselves. We want to replenish our energy. So these nice deep breaths are a great way to do that. If you find yourself drifting away in terms of your attention, that's okay too. You know, if you're drifting away from the words that I say, 
and the things that we might be imagining together in a little bit here. Don't worry about it. It's totally normal to do that. Just notice it and gently guide your attention back to what I'm saying, the sound of my voice, the topics we're talking about. You didn't miss anything. You didn't do anything wrong. And you can always come back to this again, again, as many times as you like. So don't worry about it. So let's talk a little bit about the holidays. Um, first off, one point I really want to make because everyone, everybody's holiday is different. You know, maybe you're having a very small holiday. Maybe you're not celebrating any holidays. Um, maybe you have a big family gathering. You know, I know for me, the, the typical thing is to shuttle around to multiple houses, have some big gatherings, and it's a lot. Um, I want to take a little bit of pressure off of you, though, because one thing you need to keep in mind is we have these holidays. We have these excuses to celebrate and to spend time with our families and loved ones. You also got to remember, it's just another year, you know, let's say that this year something's different and that's actually the case for my family. You know, something's different in that we're keeping things a little bit smaller because we want to, and that's what we need to do. And it's easy to feel guilty about stuff like that by, you know, um, for, for making an exception or for changing the way things are done for one year or, or not attending something or attending something different, whatever it is. There, there can be so much buildup and so much pressure around doing things the right way and the same way and the way that's expected, but it's just another year. You know, if you, if you switch things up, if you're more flexible, if you do something differently, you're not going to ruin everything, you know, and everyone will adjust and everything's going to be just fine. And if you want to go back to the normal status quo of what things were like before next year, that's fine. You can. If you realize there was something special about what you did differently this year, then great. You can take that with you moving forward. But whatever the case is, really, with few exceptions, anything could happen and it's still going to be okay. And it's just another year and it's just another holiday. It's special if we want it to be, but the pressure doesn't need to be there. You also need to be mindful of yourself and learn the signs that you're getting fatigued learn the signs of getting agitated, learn the signs of going down a road that you don't want to go down during this holiday season, especially if you're spending time with others. If you're spending time with others and you notice those signs, maybe it's heat in your, in your head. Maybe it's tension in your chest. Maybe it's, um, impatience overall. Everybody's going to have a different sort of hint that tells them, Okay, things are getting elevated, but whatever that is, notice what those signs are for you and pay attention to them when you're in these situations. And when you find yourself becoming elevated, I want you to give yourself a break. Take a break from things if you need to. It's not weird to, nobody's going to be giving you a hard time about it. And if they do, fuck them. Who cares? <laughs> this is what you need to do. It's, I'm giving you permission to take breaks because it's something that we all need to do. It's something that everybody would be better off if we did. So take breaks. There's a lot of different ways to do this. If you're in a busy setting for the holiday, maybe you could um, just excuse yourself outside for a minute and be like, hey, I'll be right back. It doesn't need to be more complicated than that. You go out front or out back, get some fresh air, take a few of those deep breaths that we took before, and allow your thoughts to sort of settle a little bit and then go back to it. Um, you could take an extended bathroom break. You could take the family dog for a walk. You could pull a buddy, you know, that you, that you trust within your family or friend group and have them, you know, walk with you. You could do anything, but take those breaks if you need to, because everything's harder to deal with when you become so elevated and stressed and worried about expectations and worried about doing things right and blah, blah, blah. You know, it can be, it can be really tough. So take those breaks, be good to yourself. It's not weird. You're not doing anything wrong by taking a break. Speaking of taking a break, I have some nice cozy chamomile tea here in my, my mug. I'm going to take a sip of that. Let's take another deep breath together. In. 
and out. Good. I don't know about you, but I'm already starting to feel more relaxed. Just having this talk, you know, even if we're not doing anything formal yet, it just feels good to to talk, to be here. Now, let's say you're one of the people who has mental health considerations to take into account. I'm being a little bit facetious because I know that's a lot of you guys. That's okay. You know, um, I think that mental health and the holidays, there is a very, very important intersection there. And so there could be circumstances where maybe you need to let somebody know what to expect from you. Um, let them know, you know, what to expect when you're there, maybe at somebody else's house or what not to expect. I found that within a family or friend group or any sort of network, you might be able to find one or two key people that can be the ones that are most important that you tell. You know, these might be people that um, would be able to advise other people or advocate for you. Um, They would be the people you want to know, you want them to know what's going on. So let's say this is, uh, you know, a parent or aunt or uncle or a best friend. You could even call ahead or talk to them ahead of time and say, hey, you know, I'm going to be there for the holiday, but I'm anticipating I'm going to have a little bit of a hard time dealing with X, Y, Z. It could be um, the amount of people. It could be somebody specific that's there. It could be just, you know, rousing yourself to be social in the midst of a heavy depression. It could be anything, you know, but let them know. It's like, okay, I may have a hard time you know, doing small talk for extended periods of time this year, or I may have to escape here and there suddenly because I just need a break or a breather. Um, and I just want you to know that. So you know what to expect from me on that day. And I'm sure they would be like, wow, okay. I'm thank you for telling me, is there anything that I can do to, to be more helpful? You'd be surprised when you give people the chance, how helpful they can be, but you don't have to know how they can help you. You don't have to know the right answer as to the way they can best support you, but just letting them know how you're doing is a great first step. And the flip side of that is maybe you have some boundaries that you need to make clear. And there are all sorts of different families out there. There's all sorts of different groups out there. Sometimes, unfortunately, you're in, uh, I guess, mixed company. You know, maybe there's, there are people there that you trust and there are people there that you don't trust or have been bad to you or have even traumatized you in ways. And that's the unfortunate reality of some of these situations. And you need to do what you need to do to keep yourself safe and sane. Again, it's just another year. It's just a holiday. Most of life is not this. So don't feel pressured by the season to do things that are unhealthy for you. So if you have boundaries, Um, related to how much time you can spend somewhere, who you are going to be talking to, who you're going to allow to interact with you in certain ways, what is allowed to be said or mentioned or talked about, any of these things. It's okay to have boundaries. And it's actually helpful for both parties, meaning you and the people that are on the receiving end of those boundaries, because then everybody knows what what the rule set is. Everybody knows how to carry on. I make this analogy and some other things that I've made, but imagine that you were going to dinner with royalty, you know, literal royalty, kings and queens and all that good stuff. And they invited you for dinner and you get there and you sit down at the, you get to the dinner table, not even sitting down and everyone's standing around their chairs and no one's doing anything. And you realize, Oh crap, I don't know what the etiquette is here. I don't know what the rules are here. You're going to be insanely stressed throughout that entire meal because you don't know who goes first for what. You don't know what utensils are used for what. You don't know what to do. But if you were well-versed in all those rules, if you were well-versed in all that etiquette, suddenly you would be open to enjoy yourself, to, to you know lavish in the conversation, the food, and all of that stuff that goes along with such an extravagant affair. But that's because you know that rule set. And boundaries are similar, right? If you know what the boundaries are, you have space within that to explore and to be, you know, happy and supported and all of that. So if you have boundaries to lay out there, lay them out there. And I would say, put them out there as early as you can and then carry on because things can be, um, interesting or weird or awkward when you have to make 
a statement like that when you need to make a boundary, but it may be what you have to do, but everybody levels out. You know, it's like you may make a boundary and there might be pushback, questioning, whatever, and you can decide what you want to do with that. You can decide what you want to do with that pushback, with that, who, who knows what that you get from it. But once time moves, up, moves on, you know, time starts to move forward. Everyone usually works out fine. So put those boundaries out there if you need to do it early and then let things stabilize from there and stick to them. You know, boundaries are not an excuse for people to, you know, say, okay, that's fine. And then not listen. Um, if you have boundaries that are being crossed, you're allowed to do something about that. You're allowed to leave. You're allowed to speak up. You're allowed to find that person that's there that will advocate for you. You're allowed to do any number of those things and that's okay. And, you know, the last thing I want to say about the holidays before moving forward is I want you to check in with yourself about how much you're taking on, how much you're doing, how much burden and responsibility you're placing on yourself. We can do this a lot, you know, whether it's logistical things like, okay, I'm going to make however many dishes for the family meal, or it's holiday cards, or it's you know, reaching out to people, whatever it is, check in with yourself right now about how much you're taking on, how much you're doing, how much you're asking of yourself. And then ask yourself if there's anything that could be made easier, if there's anything that could be let go, if there's anything that could be just relaxed a little bit. Because you don't need to overburden yourself. There's a difference between wanting to participate. There's a difference between wanting to do something nice and do it well. There's a difference between that and stressing yourself out. And you don't need to stress yourself out. I'm sure your brain does a good enough job of that already. And the season does a good enough job of that already. You don't need any extra help with that. So check in with yourself. See if there's anything that could be made easier. Do you need to be doing everything? Do you need to have everything on your plate? Or could some things be let go? Could you get some help? Could you make things easier? Okay, so now we're going to move into a little bit more of a, of a guided meditation here. So for this part, if you can, close your eyes or stare off into the middle distance. Just let yourself at least relax your gaze and we're going to engage your imagination a little bit here. I want you to imagine that you are in a backyard. It could be a porch or a deck, could be on the grass, gravel. Go with your gut, whatever feels right to you. But it's nighttime. There's lots of stars in the sky. And it's chilly, but not freezing. So it's, it's a little cold, though. And you want to make a fire. And that's what we're going to do. Maybe you're by yourself. Maybe you're with people that you love. Maybe there's music. Maybe it's quiet and you just hear the sounds of nature around you. This is your space. I want this to be your safe and cozy space. And as I said, we're going to build a fire out here. We have a nice fire pit. And what I want to do is build a fire that's going to fuel you for the coming year. We want to build some things this year, and we want to let go of some things from this previous year. And so with each stick or log that you put on this fire, I want you to imagine that you are building the scaffolding for this warmth and radiance and power that you're going to take with you into this next phase. Take a deep breath with me. Let it go. Put on your first log or stick. Let's call this one hope. We're going to build hope this year. Hope that things will be good. Hope that things will grow and continue to get better. Hope. The opposite of despair. The opposite of feeling like it's not worth it. 
it is worth it. Even if things have been hard, they can be better. Some of that's due to chance, some of that's due to our efforts, some of that's due to who knows what else. There are different factors, but things can get better. And even if things haven't been terrible for you this year, that's great. Things can still get better, and we can still have hope to grow and continue this trend. So place that piece of hope on the fire and let it be there. And that's going to be our foundation. Next, let's add some confidence. This might be a, a foreign concept for, for some of you, but I think it's worth it. I think it's, it's, it's a worthy thing to try to build in this coming year and this next decade. Some confidence. Why not? Why the hell not? You deserve some confidence. You have been through a lot. You've made it through every single one of your hardest days that you've ever had in your entire life. And here you are. You're alive. You're listening to this meditation. You're with me. There's no reason to lack confidence. You don't have to know how to do everything. You don't need to do everything the right way. Maybe you can build some confidence in yourself, understanding that no matter what comes up, you've always been and always will be able to find a way through it. That doesn't have to be alone. That can be with help. That can be with assistance. Reaching out for help is not a failure. It's the opposite. Reaching out for help is you engaging your support system. That's you being smart. That's doing what you need to do. And so I want you to allow yourself to think that maybe you could be confident in that. Maybe you can be confident in moving forward, knowing that things will change, things will come up, good and bad and otherwise. And for all of that, you'll adapt to it and you'll keep moving forward and you'll keep surviving. And maybe you'll succeed. You know, maybe you will be just a badass. Maybe you will do this thing and you'll be proud of yourself for that. And maybe it's okay to hold your head up high. Maybe it's okay to believe that you deserve the benefit of the doubt. Maybe it's okay to believe that you're good. Confidence. Maybe you even say the word out loud. Say the word confidence out loud quietly, loudly, whatever feels right. Confidence. How does that sit with you? Let the word linger and just kind of feel it. You don't need to commit to it right now, but it's something I want you to consider. I think that you deserve some confidence. So let's place our confidence on this fire that we're building and move on to adding some clarity. You've had a lot of opportunities for learning, a lot of opportunities for growth, a lot of opportunities to experience things. Again, good, bad, otherwise. You've had a lot this year. And one thing that comes with these experiences is more clarity. This is going to mean something different to all of you, but maybe it's clarity about who you are. Maybe it's clarity about other people in your life. Maybe it's clarity about your purpose. Maybe it's clarity about the world. Whatever it is, that's something we're going to embrace this next year. We're going to embrace that clarity and understand that our experiences mean something. We're taking something from them. We're learning from them. We're becoming more clear, gaining that clarity. And that's a powerful thing. That makes our experiences worth it. And again, maybe bad things happened to you. Maybe you went through some stuff that you wish you could take back or that you wish didn't happen to you. And you're allowed to feel that way. I, I wish those things didn't happen to you either. I do. We can't take that back though. We can't go back. We can only move forward. And so maybe claiming some clarity from that is something that is a very powerful tool that 
you can own clarity. So let's put that clarity on our fire as well. We have hope, we have confidence, we have clarity. How about some resolve? Next one is gonna be resolve. Resolve is, is, is similar to clarity, but this is clarity and purpose. And I want you to feel more resolved this year. I want you to feel like you understand better both yourself, what you value, what you stand for, and resolve to be committed to those things. You're going to have ups and downs. Your resolve will be tested. You're going to feel weaker in your resolve and stronger in your resolve at different parts of the year, of the decade. And that's normal. That's okay. But embrace that resolve. With confidence, resolve, clarity. Holding your head up and looking forward is the only thing that you got. The past is the past, and it's important in terms of context and learning and the things that we've taken from it but right now we're talking about what's next and resolve is something that i want you to keep with you feel it in your heart and feel it in your bones you got this so let's put that resolve with our hope confidence and clarity on that fire that we're building up here Next, creativity. I don't know if you consider yourself a creative person, but we all have creativity within us. It comes out in different ways. For some of us, it's obvious. Maybe you're an artist. Maybe you make something. For others, maybe the creativity is in our ability to build a relationship. Maybe your creativity is in your ability to see commonalities between different types of information and content that you ingest that you take in from the world maybe your creativity is being able to make people smile in a way that other people don't make them smile maybe you're an awesome freaking latte artist whatever it is we all have creativity within us and that's a spirit that I want to want to kindle. I want to help breathe life into that creativity that you have. Doing things a little bit differently, you know, taking maybe a chance here or there to switch it up. You know, what you've done has gotten you through to this point, but maybe there's something a little bit creative you can do to change it and see how that sits with you. See if that works for you. If not, cool. No harm, no foul. But maybe we can be a little bit creative and just see, just see if it works. Embrace that creativity. So let's place that creativity with everything else. Our hope, our confidence, our clarity, our resolve, our creativity. And lastly, identity. I wonder if there's a few of you that were a little bit startled by that word. Identity is something that we're always building, our identity of ourselves, you know, it's something that we're told about at a young age, what our identity should be. We experiment with what our, ident our identity should be in adolescence, then we're told again what our identity should be as an adult. We go back to periods of exploration. And so for this coming year, I want you to consider what you're learning about your identity. Pulling in these other things, pulling in this confidence, pulling in this resolve and this clarity. Learn who you are, embrace who you are, and grow through who you are. You're allowed to change. You're allowed to become different in ways. You're allowed to expand. You know, you're allowed to contract if you need to. You're allowed to do these things, and that's all part of your identity. But learn what those things are. Learn who you have been. Learn who you are. Learn who you would like to be and who you're becoming. Take stock of your identity. 
and own it again with that resolve with that clarity with that confidence you are you and i'm glad that you exist okay well now that we have all of this nice kindling you know all these pieces of wood that we've built up our hope confidence clarity resolve creativity and identity we're ready to breathe some life into this fire and the way we're going to do this is with each breath we're going to give up something we're going to let go of something and we're going to give it to that fire so not only are we giving something up from this past year from this past decade but we're allowing it to fuel this fire that we're taking with us into the new year I think there's something exceptionally powerful about that not just letting go for letting go's sake but making this useful to us so first thing that we're going to let go of is perfectionism that's right I'm talking to you perfectionism so let's take a deep breath and when we exhale we're going to be blowing it into the fire trading our perfectionism for some confidence deep breath and out good and as you breathe out, the fire swells and brightens, responds to what you're doing, giving up some of that perfectionism. Nobody's perfect. Sorry, nobody is. None of us know what the hell we're doing. We are all humans flying around in our solar system on this rock with a bunch of water and dirt on it, and we live these tiny short lives, and try to make a difference while we're here nobody is perfect that metric that you've been holding yourself to is unattainable it always moves it's a moving goalpost it is illogical for you to try to reach that you can continue improving you can continue doing better i want you to i want you to strive to do better but perfect is something that none of us can get and that's great that's what makes humans humans that's okay. You're allowed to be imperfect. And you're allowed to appreciate the people around you that are also imperfect. Because that's beautiful. So give up that perfectionism. Fuel your fire with the remnants of that perfectionism. Next thing I want you to let go of are regrets regrets deep breath in and out again the fire swells embraces you with its warmth glows and accepts these regrets takes them off of your hands again you can't change the past you can learn from it and you have learned from it and you are learning from it but it's a lot harder to do that if you're harboring these regrets and they're holding you down and holding you back. Forward is the direction that we're moving in. Forward. And the next thing that we are going to give up to the fire, let go of, is feeling like we're running out of time. I'll say more, but first, let's get rid of that. Feeling like we're out of time, that we're running out of time. Breath in. Out. Good. It's very, very easy to fall into this trap to feel like there's some universally prescribed path that we're supposed to be on that things are supposed to be done by now that things have to go a certain way and rarely is that the case rarely do things have to look one specific way 
This could be in relation to your job, your personal life, your school, whatever it is. It's easy to feel pressured. It's easy to feel like you haven't done things quickly enough or you're not where you should be. And that's BS. You know, you're, it doesn't matter where you should be. You're where you are. And that's what we have to work with. And you can desire to be somewhere else and work toward that. But you're not running out of time. Unless I have some 99-year-old listening to this that is literally running out of time, <laughs> then you got no excuse. Even 60 is young. You can do so much still. So if you feel like you've you know what, I'm gonna pause because our next one is related. Let's tie these two together. Take a deep breath and let go of feeling like you missed opportunities. Deep breath. And out. Again, feeling that fire. It's easy to feel like you've missed opportunities and that you're running out of time to make them happen but you got to question whether that's true or not or whether that's just somebody telling you that that's the truth, whether that's what's prescribed for you, whether that's the normal way, whatever it is. You're not running out of time. Maybe time is something that you want to keep in mind with something that you're doing or working on, but you're not running out of time. You're not missing anything. Don't feel like you've lost the opportunity. And that's where those regrets come in, right? You can make these things happen. Next up, we're going to get rid of not feeling like we are good enough. <sighs> Let's let that go. <laughs> Let's let that go. Deep breath in. And out. You are good enough. You're good enough. You are good enough. It's irrelevant that you like and dislike certain parts of yourself. Sometimes that's more heavily weighted toward the dislike part. That does not mean that you are bad. It doesn't mean that you're not good enough. Even me, I can use double negatives in a sentence like that, and I'm still good enough. You are good enough. And if there are people this year that are trying to make you feel that you are not good enough, maybe it's time to enact some of those boundaries. And that includes with yourself. You need to treat yourself better. You need to treat yourself well and understand that you are worth treating well. Next, I want to give up pain. Take a deep breath in. And out. Pain can be any number of things. Physical, emotional, spiritual. Some things this year probably hurt. Maybe they hurt a lot. Maybe they still do. And while I wish I had the power to cure you of all of your pain right now, you know, I don't. But at the very least, I want to give you permission to get on better terms with your pain, to let go of the way that your pain controls you, to let go of the way that your pain influences you, to let go of the way that pain makes you perceive yourself those parts we might be able to do something about. By all means, please work toward healing. Please work toward having less pain. And also work on your relationship to that pain. And with that, I think that we have a beautiful fire going here. We've built up a fire full of hope, confidence, clarity, resolve, creativity, identity. 
And we fueled that by giving up our perfectionism, our regrets, our feelings like we're running out of time and have missed opportunities, our feelings of not being good enough and our pain. Remember this fire and come back to it if you need to. Come back to this space if you need to under these stars with this fire warming you and fueling you, bolstering you for this year ahead, for this decade ahead. I have so much confidence in you and I'm so proud of you. I absolutely mean that. And I'm talking literally to you right now. I am proud of you and I'm glad that you're here and I have confidence in you. So let's do this thing, okay? Together, all of us. In the moments that pass from here on, I want you to think about this fire. And as we exit our work together, you and I today, think about if there's anything that we missed for you, if there's anything else that we should be adding to this fire, any other pieces of log or kindling that we want to build up with that we want to bring with us into the next year and anything that we need to breathe out and just let go of to fuel that fire and leave behind. Those things may be unique for you and I want you to give yourself a chance to think of those, add them, and go through the same process, taking a deep breath and expelling it into this fire. Again, this fire that we're taking with us, that we can return to, that will be with us as we move forward. Thank you for spending this time with me.